Hi everyone, in this video I want to go over a very, very famous book on linear algebra. This is the book by Hoffman and Kunz, Kenneth Hoffman and Ray Kunz, and this is the book they wrote on linear algebra. This is the inside of the cover, Linear Algebra by Kenneth Hoffman, Associate Professor of Mathematics, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, that would be MIT, and Ray Kunz, Associate Professor of Mathematics, Washington University, St. Louis, Missouri. This is the inside cover. This book was written in 1961. That was a very, very long time ago. I mean, that was, what, 59 years from the date of this video. Um, wow. Really, really, really old school book. This is the preface. Our original purpose in writing this book was to provide a text for the undergraduate linear algebra course at MIT. So this book was designed for math majors at the junior level. At present, about three-fourths of the students major in science or engineering, and they range from freshmen through graduate students. So quite uh, a variety of students uh, in this class. But the purpose of this book is that it was written for math majors. So this is an abstract level linear algebra book. It's not a computational book. Uh, the authors do go over computations, However, it is a proof-based book. This is the table of contents. It starts off with linear equations. I'll try to go slow. Then it goes on to vector spaces. Really nice treatment of vector spaces. I've actually read uh, this entire chapter on vector spaces. Linear transformations. Really good chapter there. I read about half of this chapter. Then it goes on to polynomials. Determinants. Invariant direct sum decompositions, the rational and Jordan forms, inner product spaces. I've looked at parts of this uh, chapter as well. It's very, very well written. Bilinear forms, and then there's an appendix on sets, functions, the all important equivalence relations, and a couple of other things. Let's take a look further inside this legendary book. This is the very first chapter. It starts with linear equations, and he starts as any good linear algebra book should, perhaps, with a treatment of fields. It talks about defining what a field actually is and states all of the axioms of a field. It's written very, very clearly. This is the chapter on vector spaces. This is a really, really good section. I've actually read all of this chapter, uh, and it reads very, very well. Um, here he defines a vector space by giving the usual vector uh, space axioms. And it's written, again, I feel like it's written for people who, who care about math and people who, who love math and appreciate math. It's definitely written for math majors. You can definitely tell uh, by the tone in which the authors uh, use throughout the book. This is still the same chapter. I just wanted to mention that, you know, he does give all of the usual examples, right? The n-tuple space the space of n by n matrices over the field F, the space of functions from a set to a field, and then the space of polynomial functions over a field F. Then he goes here and talks a little bit about uh, complex numbers, and then he defines linear combinations. So it's a very, very standard treatment. I, I believe this was like the book back in the 60s. This was the linear algebra book uh, for math majors. A very, very popular book. The exercises in this book are absolutely phenomenal um, in the sense that, one, you could do them, or at least some of them or most of them, after you read this book. So if you pick this up for self-study, in theory, you should be able to do most of the problems. They're not too bad. And two, if you're taking a class on linear algebra, the exercises you find in this book will help you in your class. So you might be, you know, working on a problem like uh, problem number two, and that might be on your test, right? That's a very standard uh, question that you would see on a linear algebra test in college. So the material taught in this book uh, and the exercises in the book go along very, very well with what you would see in a college classroom. So it's a really good book to have if you're already taking a college class on linear algebra. I totally recommend it. One of the downsides to the exercises is that there are no solutions. So 
The authors do not include solutions uh, in the back of the book. However, the fact that the exercises go along so well with you know what you would see in a college level course, um, I think still make it worth it. So if you if you work through them and you work through a proof, uh, you know usually you can tell if your proof is correct, especially if you're reading a book like this. I mean this is a proof based book on on linear algebra. I think it's important for people to realize that you know when you try to to read a book like this, if you're if you're taking a linear algebra class and it's your first linear algebra class, or maybe you're completely new to linear algebra, you know, you're not expected to, to understand everything that's written in this book. I mean, even though it's written really well, um, this is a proof-based book. So it takes a lot of effort to understand everything. And I think a better approach, and this is not really a popular one, but is to just read for enjoyment, you know, read for pure mathematical enjoyment and understand what you understand and what you don't understand, let it go, and try to appreciate the things you understand as you read the book. That's how I'm able to get through a lot of these books. You know, I'll read and read and read and read, and every once in a while I'll, I'll come to something that doesn't quite make sense, and I'll think, oh, well, I don't have a piece of paper with me, so I can't write that down, but I could probably figure it out, so let me just keep reading, or let me go to the next section. It's a really hard mentality to have, uh, when you're um, reading math books. Most people, and this is just human nature, you know, when they get to something they don't understand in math, they sit there for hours and try to understand it. And that's okay, that's good. You, you need to be that way in order to learn math. But at the same time, uh, you need to move past that sometimes so that you can kind of reach more breadth in mathematics, right? You want more exposure. You want to know about what the topics in this book are. And you'll never do that if you never make it past chapter one. This is one of the most important sections in the entire book, and it's one of the hardest sections to learn and to understand. It's representation of transformations by matrices. And the authors do an okay job of explaining this. I wouldn't say it's, it's fantastic. Um, I have many books on linear algebra, and I have other books that do a better job uh, than Hoffman and Kunz. And it, it hurts me to say that because, you know, Hoffman and Kunz, is such a prized and valued book. I mean, this is a super famous book. Again, this was the book in the 60s on linear algebra. I'm pretty sure uh, this was used at MIT. You can see whoever owned this book before me underlined everything. I can almost like feel their struggle through the pages. You know, they were trying really, really hard to understand this because, you know, maybe their teacher said, hey, you know, you need to understand what this means, you know? So they, they, they went to this part of the book and they underlined it and they knew that it mattered, they knew it was important. I can kind of feel the struggle, you know, many, many years ago through the pages of this book. So I took the cover off the book so you could see what it looks like uh, without the cover. So if you get a copy and it looks different, um, this is what it looks like. So it's Hoffman and Kunz uh, Linear Algebra, there's the side of it. It's a good size for a book, it's got a good weight, you know, you can carry it around in your backpack if you, if you like doing math outside under a tree or you know, by a river if you live near a river. Um, it's easy to carry around and easy to, to carry with you. Really, really good book. This is the inside of the cover and I'm filming at an angle because there's a glare in the back, sorry. But it says, what sets this book apart from others of linear algebra is its unusual success in conveying the meaning of abstract concepts in concrete situations. I agree, uh, it did a really good job. I mean, it was used for years after being published and it's probably still used at some schools. Another feature which makes this book an exception among its kind is the variety of its problems and exercises. That is true, however, um, we're in 2020 now and there are a lot of books that have even more exercises than this. For example, the Friedberg book, which is a much newer book, has more problems uh, than this book, I believe. Throughout the book, these range in complexity and difficulty from the most elementary to the highly advanced. That is also true. Both the material and its method of presentation were tested in classroom use at MIT. Both proved highly effective in developing the student's understanding of linear algebra and their appreciation of mathematical abstraction and rigor. Absolutely. Let's keep going over here. The authors treat the essentials of linear algebra fully, and then it goes on to the topics. And there they are, Kenneth and Ray. I like calling them by their first names. It makes me feel like, you know, like I know them. So that's the book, Linear Algebra by Hoffman and Kunz. If you're taking linear algebra at a college, I highly recommend that you pick up this book. 
I'm pretty sure I got this book for less than $10 uh, several years ago. Um, if you want to learn linear algebra on your own, I still highly recommend picking up this book. However, I would also pick up other books on linear algebra. There's other really good beginner books that are easier than this one for beginners. Remember, this is a book written for math majors at MIT, so that should tell you something uh, about the level of the book. I mean, the people who wrote this book wrote it for students at one of the best schools in the world. And not only that, you know, these were math majors. It's kind of interesting at the beginning how they talked about the percentage of math majors in the class. You know, most of them weren't math majors. You know, there's not that many math majors out there. So if you're a math major, that's awesome. And if you're not, it's okay, but maybe, maybe consider it. Good luck and take care.